You guys ready to tackle a brand new problem? If you want to code along, make sure to hit the link in the description below. It's time to pop our daily dose of code. Hey guys, this next problem, generate parentheses, has been asked in a lot, lot of different places. Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Facebook, Oracle, and a lot more. And that's because it's a staple problem that tests your knowledge on a certain fundamental concept that you may have to use a lot in programming. Now, without any further ado, let's get into the problem. Generate parentheses. You are given an integer n. Generate all possible balanced parentheses containing n opening and closing parentheses and return a sorted array. A string of parentheses is considered well balanced if there are never more closing than opening parentheses at any point. Okay. This is the input and output right here. Let's take a slightly closer look and let me explain this with the help of an analogy. Now, let's say you're playing a game with one of your friends where you throw a ball and she throws it back. So it's baseball, I guess, in the US. Here in India, we call it catch catch. And say n is the number of balls you have. You can throw each ball only once. In case you've got just one ball, you throw it once. That's represented by an opening parenthesis. And she returns it to you. That's a closing parenthesis. This is the only possibility. She can't throw it back to you unless she gets it first. If n is two, you can throw both her balls to her and she can throw both of them back. Alternatively, you can throw one, which she returns. Then you can throw the second, which she returns. These are the two possibilities. Now, guys, make sure that you don't put spaces in the middle of your parentheses in the output. I'm just doing it so it's more readable. Now, say n is three. Let's try to devise some sort of strategy to get every possible string. So option A is I throw every single ball to her, which she then returns back. This is option A. Option B is I throw two and receive one back. Now there are two possibilities. She's got one with her. I've got one with me. So I can throw the one I have to her and she returns both the first back to me. Or option B is she can return the one she has first. Following that, I can throw the last, which she returns. Similarly, the last two possibilities are going to look like this. Now, guys, I leave this open. Just have a look at it. If you think you can solve it, just visit the link in the description down below. It'll take you straight to our Hacker Earth platform. And from there, you can code out your solution and check it against all our test cases. In case you want to see the solution, make sure to stick around. This is a problem we're going to solve using recursive function calls. If you don't know what recursive functions are, calls are, or if you want to brush up on them a bit, just hit this caption right here. It'll take you to a video where I explain recursive function calls with the help of a problem. Since it's a pretty direct application of recursive function calls, let's just go straight into the code. As part of our solution, we're going to have to consider two factors. Factor A, our final string is going to have n opening and n closing parentheses. And factor B, we can never have more closing than opening parentheses at any point in the string both of which are mentioned here in the question. This here is the code. This is where we call the function, which is going to generate every possibility for the first time. What you may be wondering is how result is going to be able to retain its changed value. Whereas all these other parameters right here maintain their initial values from when they were called. The reason is that result is being passed by reference. When we pass something like an array, we actually pass a pointer to the function call. And the thing about pointers is it doesn't matter where they're modified in the program, that change will get reflected everywhere else. These other values right here, they're called by value. So if these values change, the moment that function call is exited, the values are reverted back to their previous state. This is our exit clause. This is super important because without this, our recursive function call will keep on going until we run out of memory, it will be called infinite times. So we need an exit condition. Our exit condition is naturally, if the number of opening and closing brackets are equal to n, then we put that string into our result array. 
and we terminate the function call. Now, if that's not the case, we've got to check. Open tracks the number of opening brackets or opening parentheses and close tracks the number of closing parentheses. Initially, open and close are both zero since our string is empty. If open is less than n, we're going to add an opening bracket to our string and we're going to increment the count by one. If close is less than open, this is the second condition that was mentioned in the question. Close can never be greater than open at any point in the string. If close is less than open, we add a closing bracket to the end of our string and we increment close by one. Another noteworthy point is that this recursive function call will return an automatically sorted array. The array will already be sorted. We don't have to do any extra bubble sorting or anything like that, which we can see right here. Once we hit compile and test, our sample test cases have been passed and it returns a sorted array. Once we hit submit, we can see each and every test case has been passed. So guys, that's the solution to the problem. Generate parentheses. I hope you liked the way I explained it. If you did, make sure to hit the golden trio, like, subscribe, the bell icon on the side. And if you have any better ways of solving it, if you've got any doubts or if you've got any suggestions for future problem videos, just leave them down in the comments down below. It's been a pleasure solving this one for you guys. I'll see you all next time.